Welcome back to Blackout, House of Bob's cyberpunk adventure set in the Vantal Megaplex and powered by the Sprawl RPG system. Hi, I'm Christina, and I'm playing Olivia Crow, who's on the run for Mass Corp while trying to figure out who's friend and who's foe. This is Schubert. I'll be playing Bunk, the cyberfunky audio junkie, packing beats on the Vantal streets. My name is Alex. I'll be playing Garrett, conspiracy theorist, wildcard, senior citizen. I'm Dan. I'll be playing Tiz, the hard-nosed reporter, tracking down corruption no matter the cost. And I'm Jake, your GM. If you want to support the show, check us out on Patreon, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, or just tell your friends about us. Roll on. Hello everyone, Jake here. You may have already heard, but I just wanted to let everybody know that we're heading into the final mission of this campaign. It's hard to say exactly how many episodes we'll get, but we'll be wrapping up sooner than later. We had a lot of fun with this campaign. I appreciate you all tagging along with us through a less known system, a homebrew setting, and a bit of a different play style to what you usually get. Thanks very much to all of you. Plans are already in motion for the next campaign, and I think you all will be excited when you hear the details. That's all for now. Stay funky, Cyber Junkies. So during the last session, we did a little cleanup after your encounter with Nickel, and you paid a reputable individual to put her on ice at a cryogenics facility on the sly, hopefully keeping her out of your hair for good. As you leave the facility, Garrett, Daring Ned approaches you, <gasps> Okay, arms outstretched for a handshake. You paid him to deal with uh, Nickel, and now that that's done, his contract is over. Oh, wow. <laughs> Unless you... Uh, Say otherwise, he bids you adieu and begins to walk off into the city. Um, well, I give him one of those like double tap, like handshake, uh, high five things. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And uh, I just ask, you know, if he wants to kick around with me and the barfers or if he's uh, heading <laughs> off. <laughs> I think you need to explain I that. that. <laughs> I hate everything about that. <laughs> explain yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, just, you know, he, uh, we, we had a good time having Daring Ned around. And I just ask if he wants to, you know, keep hanging out and, <laughs> you know, see what kind of uh, shit we can get into. He gets half your pay then. Yeah, during Ned, he's got bills to pay, family right. to feed. Fair enough. Unless there's money in it for him, he's got to move on to the next gig. Well, I'm out of money, so no. <laughs> I, I bid him adieu, and I uh, watch him walk off into the uh, sunset. Yeah, just punching things. Yeah, like fucking mailboxes and stop <laughs> signs. <laughs> just windmilling his arms as he walks down the street. <laughs> yeah, he just takes off into the sunset. <laughs> oh, right. That's right. He turns them into helicopter arms and just flies off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you need oh, a good sound effect for that one. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh daring Ned. We hardly knew you. I wish we knew more. Yeah, I'm I'm good. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got He's it. He's got a whole side story <laughs> that we can play. Anything uh, <laughs> specific that you guys need or want to do, or are we good to jump ahead a bit here? Um No, I'm I'm good. Yeah. Ready to rock. I'm I'm ready to move on from nickel and all that business. Definitely. So we'll, yeah, we flash forward a little bit. You guys are hanging out in the RV, just uh, idling, waiting for a hit on another mission. You get a new message from Adira, your previous client, and she's asking you to meet her and this time a friend of hers for another possible job. Other than that, details are scarce. She just asked you to meet her in the same place as last time. Where was that again? Like a skate park or something? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean... I, Our I, old haunting grounds. I would have been suspicious if she had us meet somewhere, you know, Bells? shady. But, yeah. I mean, that's a nice public spot, so... Mm-hmm. And, I mean, last time she was pretty cool with us, so... Yeah. I say, I hate. All right, and put on my disguise, my... My baggy jeans and my, sorry, my, my Janko jeans. Oh, okay, yeah. Who, yeah who's and, in this uh, guy? I don't know. Janko? Janko. Janko. But they're Janko in this reality. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're Janky. They're Janky. The Jankos. <laughs> Sounds good. <Yep. laughs> I'm glad you dressed up. <laughs> yeah, I put on some pants. I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's a whole other person. <laughs> Do you have to spend like a gear for that? <laughs> no, I, I had them, uh, they were on my backstory, so. 
they were on my backstory. <laughs> In my backstory. <laughs> I, they on were, his manuscript. Yeah, mentioned multiple times throughout my backstory, so I can assume <laughs> I have them. Okay. I think all we right. should start calling it all autobiographies my backstory. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, fire up the RV and uh, drive off to yeah, the old uh, skate park that she had asked you to meet her at. Sounds good. Sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> you see her standing across the park uh, in kind of one of the corners by a, a street light and a couple garbage cans. And she's accompanied by another. You see a shorter man wearing a long jacket with a mismatched old raggedy baseball cap. And kind of a just a kind of depressing aura, a bit of a resting sad face. And Adira sees you approach and waves you over with a melancholy smile. And she says, hello again. Uh, th- thank you for your help. I wish I could have helped Henry, but I- I'm glad I was at least able to understand my brother a little better in the end. And hopefully some good can still come of this. But before we continue, I, I do have to tell you something. I-, I have to come clean. I'm not exactly who I said I was. I- <gasps> oh? Uh-oh. My-, my name is Adira Seti. I'm the heir to Mother Lode. No. <laughs> I put my hands on my face all shocked. <laughs> we didn't know this information at all. <laughs> yeah, we, we feign ignorance. Yeah, mm-hmm. she registers your uh, surprise. And she's like, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't honest with you, but I didn't want this getting back to my parents. I hope you can forgive me and we can move on. It's fine. We weren't going to tell them anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apology accepted. In the name of friendship. <laughs> it's cool, but like... We're not narcs, man. We wouldn't have told your parents. Yeah, we skaters, player. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That's the most suspicious thing you've ever said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you might as well have said I'm not a cop. Yeah. All right, I, I, I'm going to roll to Ollie. <laughs> That's your style roll. Uh, I'm sorry about this, Adira. He's just, he's getting caught up in the moment, you know. Yeah, I got it's, an eight. Oh, so slightly good. successful. You do it, but you yeah, fall down. <laughs> I know now that I can trust you all, but you have to understand. I wasn't sure at first. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this just sealed it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, you can't really trust anybody these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not going to tell our parents about this, are you? <laughs> oh, shit. Can, could you tell me who they are? Who, who are you telling? My mom would be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you could just tell me their names, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Ditto. She continues. <laughs> <laughs> now is not the time to, you know, burden them with your family woes. <laughs> oh, it's not? Okay. <laughs> no. Sorry. She says, uh, my, my parents, they were ashamed of my brother. They disowned him long ago. They wanted to cover up his death. They were embarrassed that somebody with their name would be killed in such a place in such a way. They told me to forget about it and to stop asking questions. That's why I needed you to investigate for me. Was it because of the podcast? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, he have was, you heard it? <laughs> he's a lucrative <laughs> podcaster. I think they should have been proud. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty prestigious. Mm, I think he was pre-revenue. <laughs> oh, never mind then. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not convinced that that's all there is to it. I'm worried that they might be further involved in this somehow, that they've made some kind of arrangement with the Axiom, that they're a part of whatever the Axiom has planned with the weapons you showed me. Hmm. Your brother? No, her parents. Oh, her, her parents. parents. Or her, her family. The, right, right. Mm-hmm. Or mother load. That's why they don't want to, to dig any deeper. Yeah, okay. so they, they said it was because they were ashamed of the son, but right. Adira is concerned that there might be something more to it. Right. So you want us to kill your parents so you can inherit their uh, business? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to take uh. care of my parents. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't okay. them in a home. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I missed that last part. You were breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> She's right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I got electronic ears. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, maybe Garrett's ears are on the prints. Yeah. <laughs> my ears are going through a tunnel. <laughs> I asked Adira, like, uh, did uh, did Henry know your parents were involved in the Axiom? I don't think so. If he did, he never mentioned it. When do you think you, like, when did you start suspecting all of this? After your brother died or before? Mostly in, in the way that my parents reacted. Mm-hmm. As I said, I've been trying to dig up a little more info, and she points to the person standing beside her. Mm-hmm. And she says uh, uh, that this is uh, Detective Wilson. 
He works for the Vantal Police Department. Ah, uh, cop. Oh god. Oh my god. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you didn't tell us you were bringing a, a cop, Adira. Yeah, that's entrapment. <laughs> Now, to be fair, I just said they, he works with the Vandal Police Department. He could be a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I guess. Yeah, but, but is, is he? he a janitor? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he said he was a detective. <laughs> no, yeah, his, first, true. his first name is Detective. His last name is Wilson. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I can see why he chose uh, this Olivia profession. Olivia starts then. backing away. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. He's, he wants to help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Olivia's a wanted terrorist. <laughs> yeah, help arrest us, probably. I immediately stand behind Garrett. <laughs> just just hear him out. Garrett can't hear much, but go. F- Wilson uh, steps forward. He was smoking a cigarette that he drops to the ground and puts it out with his boot. Littering. That's a $5 fine. <laughs> Cops can do whatever they want. <laughs> Not in this <laughs> jurisdiction. <laughs> As Adira said, I'm Detective Wilson. I've been working undercover in the Axiom for a while now. He is a cop. I had my own worries, but after Adira shared with me what you showed her, I had to look into it. I still don't know exactly what the axiom is up to, but I'm willing to bet it's not exactly philanthropic. But I do think I know when and where they're going to try to do it, and I want to try to stop them. Fortunately, I'm still undercover in the axiom, and if Cadaver and the other big corps are involved, then I don't know who I can trust in the force. Worse, if the strap hangers are involved, then I can't work with the Transit Commission either, which leaves my ability to intervene pretty limited, but maybe with your help we can figure something out? I mean, how do we know you're on the up and up? How do I know you're on the up and up? We can do this all day. <laughs> We're not cops. <laughs> That's how you can know. Garrett coughs and makes like a, you know, money motion with his fingers. Uh, yeah, Adira steps forward and I know people in your line of work don't do this for free. I can pay you. I just want to see this through and maybe we can help some people. So you're undercover with the Axiom, but not with the strap hangers. You're saying those are, those guys are dangerous? They're, they're definitely powerful. They've got their tendrils and a lot of the big organizations in Vantal. In, in particular, they have a lot of influence on the uh, the vessel. And if Axiom, if that's what the Axiom is targeting, then, well, then that's going to be their way in. Like, so you said you've been undercover for a while with them. Like, can you give us any sort of info where you land in the the scheme of things? Like, are you? Do you, do you know anyone <laughs> or are you just like a newbie or an accolade? Yeah, or how what? high up the chain are you? I was mm-hmm. a third level Emerald adjutant. What I don't know mean? what that means. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? It means he was just below the rank of Dandelion and the rest. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, so. <laughs> well, Dandelion was pretty helpful, actually. Yeah. That's not a bad place to be because yeah. nobody looks at the the grunts, you know? I had to be careful not to attract too much attention. Mm-hmm. All right. So where do we fit in in all this? Yeah, what do you want us to do? We can uh, talk more about this. Um, I don't think we should chat here, though. My apartment is nearby. Would you like to go and discuss it further? You never mm. go to a second no. location. <laughs> I'd prefer to do it on the half pipe. but <laughs> we... <laughs> Gotta get my grind on, you know? So we parked not too far from here in front of the Arby's, the RRV. <laughs> if you'd like to go back to it, that, I think we'd feel safer going there. Um, he, he, he nods and uh, motions for you to lead the way. <laughs> Fall right into our trap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> you just said it on the comms. No worries. <laughs> I assume Tiss like skateboards ahead to show the way. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Doing, doing some sick stunts. Did you download, like, a chip into your brain or something? <laughs> like, how are you doing this? You never asked me if I could skateboard or not. No, but you have zero cool. You're the least cool. I have plus cool. two cool. <laughs> what are you talking He's about? He's got no style. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so your tricks have... I'm a, I'm a technician. I don't have a lot of style to it, but I can do them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's all technical. Yeah. All right. I'm like a... You know, the skaters like me, but other people don't. <laughs> Mm, I don't think they like you much. <laughs> How do you know? This is the first time you've been here. Second time. I've met you. Some teen skates by you and he says, get out of here, old man. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna take that? All right, I pull out my taser gun. <laughs> oh, okay, I start we pushing. flash forward. Yeah, just start pushing him towards the RV. All right, we drag Tiss back into the RV. You guys already know um, that the Axiom has been trying to infiltrate the vessel in some way. Mm-hmm. And then... Wilson uh, continues. I was able to track a couple of fake IDs that they got from the strap hangers. I believe they've already moved everything they need into the vessel breach. 
two shipping containers, presumably carrying those satellites you saw. And they're just waiting for their scheduled launch time. My best estimate is at the launch in about two days, but the vessel schedule isn't first come, first serve. It's who you know and how much Omni you're willing to throw at it, so we can't be certain of the timing. I want to retrieve that satellite, get a closer look. Ideally, I'd like to follow them up and find out exactly what they're up to, who they're working with, get the evidence we need to shut this whole goddamn cult down for good, but if it comes down to it, at minimum, we need to stop whatever the scheme is before they can pull it off. So is this a public launch? Like... Anyone can buy a ticket on it, essentially, or is this like a private thing? Well, you, anybody can buy a ticket for the vessel or to schedule, uh, you know, a delivery on the vessel. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to book on the same flight as them, if that makes sense. So that's what you're trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if we would be going on, on the, the same, same launch as them. Yeah. Okay. So we're just kind of going to the same destination as them? Well, you can either get in there before the launch. The shipping containers would just be in the warehouse in the loading area or waiting for the launch time. Ideally, like I said, I'd like to find out what the objective is at the other end, which may involve following it up. Mm. Uh, And you want one of those satellites, too. That would be best. So we can hopefully prevent something like this from happening again. Okay. Now, again, my hands are a little bit tied in what I can do, but I'll support you in any way I can. Mm, We're going to need a tab. (laughs) Adira jumps in and says, "I'm, I'm happy to help pay how I can. I can't go too crazy without attracting suspicion from my folks, but I'll be able to at least help. Sure. Do you have anything uh, not Omni, though? Because I think we're going to have to probably grease some palms. I, either way, Garrett is a pro of uh, laundering Omni, but between them and... Uh, yeah, but if it's easier <laughs> to get it right away. I think most of her funds would be in Omni. Okay. So we're going to have to do a little extra work. Okay. I'm all for it, because, I mean... They sound crazy. (laughs) That's what I thought, yeah. I don't know about these guys, though. Yeah, I mean, Bunk wants to get down to the bottom of all this uh, passing angel axiom nonsense, so I'm in. Uh, Garrett's in as long as the price is right. Well, why don't we have Garrett roll uh, get the job, then? We can find out if the price is right. Is Garrett good at this? Mm. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) Who gives a shit if he's good at it? Get the job is Edge. Edge, thank you. It was eight, nine. Does anyone want to try to assist? It sounded like Olivia was doing maybe... Some talking. A lot of talking as well. I do have some Garrett points. Yeah, sure, she can <laughs> give it a try. Some plus Garrett. Uh, I got a seven plus two. Sure, it'll bump you up to ten. Hooray. Alex, you get to choose three from the list below. The employer provides useful information, intel, provides assets, gear, job pays well, meeting doesn't attract attention. Employer is identifiable. Employer is identifiable. Number one. Who the fuck actually is this guy? Okay. Definitely, I want to know that. Um, As well, I think that the... We're going to need gear. We're going to need gear. Yeah. The employer provides gear. And employer provides... Should we do Intel or... Should we do... Uh, we're going to do pays well. We're doing pays yeah, well. And we've only got a third one. It's got to be pays well. Yeah. Done. We need that money. Get that money, honey. Do we want Intel over gear then? That's the other question. No, we pick three now. That's the three. Well, I'm saying, do we want to swap it? Oh, uh, no. Let's do gear. In the past, you guys have done Intel because both Olivia and Bunk have a way to make gear already. Right. That's one reason to go Intel, but if Garrett is feeling a little more geary, then we're feeling a little more geary. Uh, well, I could. I mean, I'm assisting, aren't I? Maybe he says gear, but I talk real loud and say, <laughs> Intel, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'll make it Intel. I'll make it an Intel. <laughs> Garrett's already got all the gear he feels he needs. He's got two guns now. Two guns and his hoodie. How much more can he carry? You didn't opt for a, a leg that could carry a gun as well? No. No, that's too bad. <laughs> Well, while you guys are talking and uh, Olivia continues talking to Wilson about you know some of the logistics here, uh, Garrett, you, um, you bring out your pad and start typing away and see if you can find some information about this Wilson character. You can't really find anything about him through like the police department, because if he is undercover, presumably they wouldn't be blasting that information everywhere. You snap a sneaky pic and cross-reference the face recognition software, something cybery like that. Uh, it's a new app called Creepshot. Yep. Creepshot. Uh, <laughs> Creeper. <yeah>. Uh, 
something. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, leave it. Leave, <laughs> leave it, it to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys had brought up the security footage at the movie theater that uh, Henry was killed in, there was five people there. Three you had identified, Dandelion, BBB, and Lex. One of them was, you didn't have the full footage. It was a little grainy, right? Some of the data had been corrupted. But now with this additional information, you get a pretty good match that this guy was at that incident. Oh, my God. <laughs> In the aftermath, you mean? No, they're with, he was one of the people that was involved. Uh, he's one of the one of the groups. Oh, he, he was the other guy. Yeah, there was oh, one like that NPC guy. that was the guy that we us. never got an idea on. That was the guy like who was always creeping on his phone. in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, she. Oh. Hmm. He didn't rise as fast as his compatriots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think he was trying to. Yeah, so there's at least some truth to what he's saying that he was in the axiom. And I mean, Adira has pretty clearly vouched for him a couple times, and I think you at least trust her a little bit. It's not about trusting her so much as it's not trusting this guy. <laughs> she might be a soft touch, you know? I think possibly, you know, with a role, maybe you could find out more, but that's what you get for that. Oh, man. You just blew my mind. I forgot all about that random yeah, guy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I wouldn't mind doing more research on Detective Wilson. I don't know sure. if now's the time, but... No, yeah. yeah, I think we'll do that after your initial conversation here. Mm-hmm. Can we ask... Uh, I would like to ask him, what does he go by in the Axiom? Obviously not Detective Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> that means Jake has to remember that name. <laughs> I remember it, but I'm not sure if he'd tell you. Oh. I think it's better if I keep my cover identity secret. I, I know you guys would understand you have done the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So next time I see you, I'm just going to point and say, hey, Detective Wilson, because I don't know anything else to say. <laughs> Or you just don't say anything to him. No, <laughs> I'd rather blow up his spot. <laughs> I mean, if you want to sabotage this mission, that's your prerogative. <laughs> no, I don't. I just don't like cops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who knew I'd be on this side of the law, man? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Continued questions. Now's the time. Okay. One question I have for him is, uh, do you have any concerns that there might be passing angel axiom members like working for the force? I don't have any specific suspicions of that, but I can't rule it out. Yeah, that would be my major concern. I mean, we don't, you could be like a double, double agent for all we know. Right? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> we can't trust him. Like you could be working for Axiom. So we got to, we got to be careful until we kind of can earn some trust with each other. Quadruple agent. He, he nods. You know, he has to do the same thing in his line of work. Do an ollie, and I'll trust you. <laughs> so we can trust you, finally. Yeah, skaters are legit. So This is what we made Tis do to get into the game. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> oh, I, I just did it, man. <laughs> he asks if there's something that, you know, uh, well, obviously he can't tell you just anything, but if there is something that you want from him that could maybe help the situation, let him know. Tell us about the blackouts. Yeah. He... he ponders it for a little bit and he he sighs <laughs> as as the dm does I, I don't know that i i don't know that i would know much more than you do I, i'm starting to doubt that they are just coincidence in my time in the axiom i saw i saw the black Oats used as a tool for the axiom to advance their agenda whether that is they're just taking advantage of it i don't know it seems a little too uh Seems like it lines up a little too well for mm-hmm. that. Have you seen one of these blue angels? <laughs> like, actually, Olivia has literally not seen them. <laughs> yeah. Um, they would show up at uh, sermons, again, more more commonly than I would say is coincidence. Did you ever get any uh, evidence that, you know, these were like projections or any like machinery that they were using? I hadn't quite gotten up to the uh, the ranks where they would trust me with that. Even, you know, even my immediate superiors and their superiors weren't able to access that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I guess it's just, you know, you're uh, like, what, what information are you giving us? Cause we already gave a lot of, to you through Adira. <laughs> hey, you didn't give me nothing. Adira gave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what uh, we, saying, but, huh? that, but we gathered all that <laughs> yeah. information. Yeah. You, did the you guys work. did a good job. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I just am <laughs> wondering, like, uh, we'd like uh, some information in return so we can mm-hmm. trust you. Something that we don't know. 
I, I know the uh, information on the fake IDs that they got from the strap hangers. I know when they had delivered their information or delivered their cargo to the vessel. I can probably tell, you know, what their kind of general schedule is there. Um, I know where the container should be. Hmm. And I can help you with information about getting into and out of the vessel. Can you give us some pictures of the, these individuals that you think you know? Like the that I don't people have. going I in have, and out? I have the information from the IDs that they use to get in. Mm. Like the code, mostly. Yeah. So like I know when they swiped in, when they swiped out, that kind of thing. But I don't have a picture of them. Mm. We could probably get something from that. I'm not a hacker. Yeah. Do you know if you got any uh, cop buddies that are like in the uh, strap hangers? You guys got any double agents in there? If there is, not that I have direct contact with, but there's certainly people in the force who are investigating the strap hangers or who, you know, for whom those are their, uh, their beat, so to speak. So I can likely get information on them. Yeah. From Seems them. like maybe if we could, uh, I don't know, get in with the strap hangers, they, they seem to be running this whole thing. I was just thinking the same thing. So maybe we could become the new double agents. I mean, I don't want to do your job for you, but I don't think we have enough time to become like double agents. <laughs> Not to be put on this mission. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, as a long-term goal. Great, but <laughs> well, um, I mean, we'll be we dead could, long before then. Yeah, if we could get maybe like a contact. Yeah, so exactly mm-hmm. something like that. I can definitely try to get you a contact with yeah. either someone who is f- more familiar with the strap hangers or involved with them. Yeah, someone within the strap hangers would be great. I'll see what I can do. First things first, we need our tickets for that flight, though. The containers that the Axiom would be sending up would be on its own, you know, uh, yeah. its own transport. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that, uh, but they're sending up Axiom people as well, are they not? No, it's on the cargo track. Oh, so they're not sending anyone with it. I thought not that there was being tickets for that. Okay. All right, maybe this is something we need to do in a lake work, but I would like to get some schematics of the area. That could be our intel or something. So yeah, basically, once you guys are going to start doing you know, mm-hmm. your research, yeah, then yeah, we'll move into the legwork phase and you can start yeah, okay. rolling on things. Mm-hmm. Then I think I'm ready. I'm done yep. with this man. I don't have any more questions. <laughs> Get out of my sight. Yeah, he, yeah, he gives you uh, his contact information, says, you know, again, I'll, I'll try to help you in whatever way I can. I'll get right on trying to get a uh, contact for you in the strap hangers. Okay. okay. Sweet, man. Yeah. He'll have to wait a minute. I pulled into the Arby's drive through so. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Just, just one sec here. Officer volleyball. We got to grab a couple of Volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Officer volleyball. Wilson. Yeah. To start, I'll just give you guys kind of the basic setup of the vessel, and then we can get into more specifics. Sweet. So first things first, the, the highway up to the vessel breach you guys have actually seen before. It snakes through the mountains up to Whistler and is basically always packed. There's tons of hotels, motels, tourist traps, exits to ski parks, eco-reserves, resorts, and some real upscale communities. Along that highway is where you guys had parked your RV previously. Uh, the breach itself is pretty much a city on its own, built on and into Whistler Mountain. There's hotels, big shopping malls, restaurants, convention center, theaters, museum of space flight, an observatory, an airport, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of tourists to the breach itself, even if they're not necessarily leaving Earth. As for the terminal, the public area is pretty much like any other airport terminal as a point of reference that we would recognize. Obviously, there's a very extensive infrastructure for all the machinery and the crew required to run it. There's two rails. One that fires faster and more frequently for cargo, which is the one the Axiom would be using for this uh, launch. And one that accelerates much more slowly for passengers. Both rails run underground the entire length of the city, emerging from the top of Rainier Mountain, good 350-ish kilometers away. And there's also an express train that runs underground between the breach and the muzzle. Once the cargo or passenger containers, uh, known as sabos, leave Earth, they are grabbed by Leica Station, where they're either redirected towards their destination or unloaded and transferred onto shuttles or other ships for longer or more VIP journeys. Normally, we would do a research roll to get uh, some more details about the vessel and maybe find some vectors of approach, but I instead had asked each of you to volunteer your own fun fact about the vessel. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to describe your fun fact, or do you want me to? Or I, I would think we like should you describe to. our own. I oh, think okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say I want Jake to, too, because I don't know like how much of it you ended up taking or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have Jake. All right. Jake. Jake. It, it'll be a conversation. So you you guys jump in as you, okay. as okay. you mm-hmm. need to. Alex's submission was a canary. 
the Cargo Assurance Normalization Arrival and Return Expert, which is a very good acronym. Man, <laughs> Thank I you. just realized how much you love acronyms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> acronyms, portmanteaus, you name it. <laughs> I love it. So this is the division of the VTC staff. Basically, they're in charge of making sure cargo arrives at its destination intact. So they are loading the cargo. They're you know monitoring the 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 pressure and you know, radiation and things like that while it's in flight. They are unloading the cargo on the other end, and you'll manage the warehouse and that kind of thing as well. There are some shady rumors about Canary things like headcount not quite adding up, an extremely high turnover, budgets not quite adding up, that kind of thing. Alex, you had suggested that uh, perhaps there is a, a subdivision of Canary where people are actually tasked with traveling with cargo up mm-hmm. into uh, um, into space and that this is probably not a job that many people necessarily come back from. Uh, this might be you know, a hangover from very early vessel technology where that was required or maybe it's just a rumor. Maybe it's just a scare tactic that they use to keep people in line. Either way, Canary as a whole is a very important division to Vessel, but there are, uh, um, again, these kind of rumors about them. Yeah, Garrett heard on Burn Nightly that Mm -hmm. um, Vantel's uh, and honestly, like Earth's wealthiest people would send like delicacies from Earth up to the moon, um, like human babies. And they would uh, put people on board of the, <laughs> of the, the first cargo. I've heard of the human babies part. But, um, uh, you don't listen the, to burn. <laughs> you got to listen to burn. Um, right, right. And they, yeah, put like a person on board the vessel uh, to make sure that uh, when when the delicacy makes it to the other end, that it's still like you know safe to eat. Don't call a baby a delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just what he heard on Burn. Yeah, that's what he heard yeah. on Burn. He's well, just because Burn verbatim. says something doesn't mean you should repeat. Yeah, I thought these were supposed just, to be facts. But. Uh, Garrett's just asking questions. That's all. He's not. He's not an expert. He's just asking questions. There's nothing wrong with uh, that. Wasn't really a question. He just made a statement. You know, here here's the information. You have to decide for yourself. That's oh, right. God. Do your own research. Do your own research. But because you know. he's not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, it's it's a fun fact that rumors exist. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not necessarily a fact that they're sending babies up there. <laughs> well, they might be sending babies, but hopefully not to be eaten. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Anyway, apparently um, there's maybe some mischief going on in the Canary Division, which might be something you guys would be able to use as a way to get closer to the cargo. Sure, Garrett. And just pat him on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Christina had added that... Um, I picture this as when uh, Olivia had spent time in the Gastown Sparks. Um, some of the you know people, maybe a few ranks higher than her, like to brag about um, you know trying to impress the newbies about some of their missions that involve the vessel. And particularly that there's... A lot of smuggling uh, that goes on with the sabos, that ones that are designed, you know, specifically for cargo that they can, you know, that they have hidden uh, compartments or hidden panels that contraband would be sent up with. And like the, the laws on, you know, Earth are not the same as the laws on the moon. So things that might be legal on the moon are not legal on Earth. So they have to hide it when they're trying to move it up, that kind of thing. Olivia had heard that some of these other sparks, they had, you know, contacts that would be able to forge passports or forge loading information and that kind of stuff, manifests and whatnot. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, that sounds right. I guess I just want to be able to picture it as the fact that like, kind of like the Millennium Falcon, it just has lots of like space that's not accounted for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if, you, if you brought up a official blueprint of the Sabo, it would you know, it would look like it's just thick, protective, radiation-proof, mm-hmm. like, wall. But actually, there's uh, little compartments in there for illicit transport. Cool. Schubert had introduced the concept of skyhooks, basically suggesting that it's it's actually not a straight shot from the vessel to the station, that there's a, a device called a skyhook, which is basically, it's like a little spinning tether <laughs> that'll grab the Sabo and then whip it around and launch it again so that it doesn't have to accelerate as fast on the ground level to keep its, you know, squishy human cargo intact. So it's actually, yeah, there's kind of these two steps for the cargo to get up to the station. Anything you wanted to add to that, Schubert? 
Uh, no, just, uh, I guess, uh, the, the one thing I was going to say is, um, um, the, and this is up to you whether this is true or not, but, uh, the kind of part of the fun fact was that the, the vessel kind of has never failed, but the sky hooks have, have failed once or twice, like not, not, uh, not killing any of its passengers, but they've just failed to hook a craft. So they had right. to, so they had to land prematurely before they reached orbit. Yeah, cool. I like that. So like when a when a bus that's like one of those electric ones like falls off the electric thing and they gotta wait for someone <laughs> with a stick to come by and <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very long stick. A but, space you know. stick, yeah. <laughs> the like um, ISS floats by and someone like reaches a stick out the window to Oh, you know, I love the idea it. that yeah. ISS still exists in the future. That's what they use the arm for. And at this oh, it's, point. It, it's a, it's a different one it stands for something else. It's only oh, a coincidence. Okay. Yeah. It stands for international uh, space stick. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all the nations of the earth banded together to create the international space stick. Yeah. Dan's vessel fun fact was the idea that there's a, a, a bit of a kind of junker economy around the space junk in orbit and which is so plentiful that they need to be you know, cleared out of the way to keep the launch trajectory of the vessel clear as well as from this from like a station to the moon and that kind of thing so that yeah that there's this whole kind of economy around pulling this uh, junk out of orbit uh scrapping it selling it that kind of thing uh based on the moon dan anything to add to that no i can the only thing i'm thinking of is that it's like probably a pretty uh prestigious job to actually acquire is because then they're trusting you with an actual like spacecraft. So I imagine it's uh highly sought after to become one of these junkers. Sure. We need to come up with a cool name for them. Junkies. Cyber junkies. <laughs> I was literally thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> Space junkies. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. No, it's got to be like, I don't know, commander space something. Hmm. <laughs> What's a fancy name for a garbage man? <laughs> a space custodian. <laughs> <laughs> a custodian, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Custodian's kind of cool. Yeah, I like <laughs> that. Vessel custodian. I like how the word custodian has like become cool now because yeah. <laughs> of these guys. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Ticking the word back. <laughs> so anyway, the idea is that there's kind of four different little aspects of how the vessel and the kind of the economy around it works. Maybe you might be able to exploit one of those on your mission here. What are some of the other things you wanted to look into during the legwork phase here? You had wanted to investigate uh, Wilson a little more, Mm -hmm. strap hangers. I wanted to get those times that he said and try to get video footage, face facial footage of these people, the ones that are coming in and out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not a hacker. (laughs) (laughs) You're yes, a, you you're, are. You're a baby I'm, a, hacker. I'm a novice hacker, yeah. Apprentice hacker. <laughs> Apprentice, yeah. I mean, we're all learning. <laughs> a lover, not a hacker. Mm-hmm. It's a lifelong learning. I think I'm going to do a tour of the Space Museum. You mentioned it in your little intro of this area. The which thing? <laughs> there, there's a Space Museum at the Breach. Oh, cool. If there's any place we can get uh, some old uh, space outfits or anything, or we might be able to find something there. Yeah, you can buy one of those custodian costumes for Halloween. <laughs> mm. I was thinking more of one that could actually survive in space. But and oh, pick me up some like space ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're already there. <laughs> so yeah, so you message uh, Wilson, and yeah, he gives you the times that the fake IDs were logged to swipe in and out at the vessel. You think it would probably be at this point, maybe a little beyond your two guys' capability to hack into the vessel systems themselves, but there's likely, you know, some CCTV cameras nearby that would have caught them, you know, on the walk up to uh, Mm -hmm. the vessel or something like that. So I think we'll probably just do like a a mind research roll. Okay. Mind is two. That's not bad. Yeah. Um, I got a five plus two mind. So Olivia got a seven. So I think maybe for a seven, I think maybe you can find one of them. So there were primarily two IDs that he was tracking. I think what it is, is like, there's just that one CCTV camera faces one direction, but one guy comes one way, the other guy comes the (laughs) other way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's just, he's walking, you know, obviously there's a lot of traffic in and Mm -hmm. out of the vessel. So he was just a little too far into the crowd or something, or they. Whoever it was. 
But the person you are able to identify. Glowing optics as a first impression role. What does that mean? So they've got some cybernetic eyes or like a cybernetic visor over their head. Cool. No, that wouldn't work. These guys are Axiom. Oh, yeah. They can't have any cyber stuff. He's just, well, they can, but that's a little too much. He, uh, he's the only one who doesn't have any cyber eyes. <laughs> Do you just want what's unique about him? Uh, yeah, if you guys have a suggestion for just something that stands out about this person. Hmm. So that you can find them later. Yeah. He's three feet tall. I was actually thinking he was really short, too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, yeah, short to the point where you'd actually notice. Yeah. Dwarfism, I guess. I Is mean, that what it's called? We haven't had any uh, small people characters. Why not? Sure. It's a pretty noticeable characteristic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good for getting into hidden compartments on Sabos. Exactly. That's why he was chosen. All We're all back <laughs> reconning this why he was picked. <laughs> Uh, okay yeah no sure i like that so yeah the thing that immediately stands out about this individual um is that they're quite short what would be a typical height for a short person three three four foot is that yeah that might be around there yeah around around three foot or so this is the only small person we've seen in the axiom so should be able to spot them later at least that we've seen we don't know everybody there Mm mm-hmm so you've got a, a positive ID on someone that, you know, was using the fake IDs to get into the uh, vessel and is involved in the Axiom. What else? About this person or just... Anything else that you guys wanted to do a quick research roll on? I kind of pictured Bunk doing more uh, research on Detective Wilson, like, as we go along. So I can do that later, maybe. Okay. I'm looking into the perils of space flight. The perils of space flight? Yeah, because... If we intend, well, I don't know if we're actually going to, but if we're going to get onto the cargo launch, I want to know what I'm <laughs> up against. I don't think you can go onto the cargo launch. I mm. think it'll kill you. That's what the canaries don't do. Don't tell them that. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, officially, you do not get on the cargo launch. Okay. Well, and I do research to see if it's even plausible. Sure. Fun fact, no. <laughs> and then out of fear about what happens if a person goes into space. Okay. Well, you could do a, a mind as well then i thought we were gonna stop it before it launches ideally and who is um who's our connection with our connection is with the axiom or with the um strap hangers which Which connection uh didn't detective wilson have a connection for us yeah he's gonna get you a strap hanger contact right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i got a 13 on my mind wow dang Mm mm-hmm See, you definitely have to go a bit deep to, in the recesses of the internet there. Because again, officially, that's just for cargo. There's no way you would survive that trip. But I think you maybe find that there are certain batches of cargo that they launch at a slower rate. I can imagine sometimes they launch something that's living, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's something like that. Occasionally they would a send livestock or something like that. Yeah. Fresh, fresh lobster. Yeah, and that has to go at a a slower rate. Um, it would still probably be too fast for you know a comfortable human trip, but if you had some kind of impact resistant G suit or something like that, it might be possible. Again, officially, there's no space for a human on one of these either. But according to Olivia's research and rumors about the Canary, that that might be possible. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, I was thinking they must be wanting to go slower than a normal because they don't actually want to go to the moon. I don't think, right? If these are satellites, I guess that's what we need to figure out is what is the item that they're trying to to smuggle out? Because are they trying to get it to the moon or are they trying to put it in orbit? Probably orbit if it's a satellite. Yeah. So which case, if it was for orbit, I don't think it could be going that fast because they probably would need to stop before the moon. So it would either way, it would launch to Leica station. Mm -hmm. And then if it was a satellite, it would be unloaded and deployed from there. Okay. So it's going to the station. For- yeah, or, or satellites would also be launched from, you know, just like a, a space pad somewhere else because mm-hmm. those are easy enough to shoot up. I was almost thinking like they were going to go to the hook maybe. This is probably all wrong, but my hypothesis so far is go to the hook and then maybe a junker meetup and they have an inside person there. I, I bet they're planning to blow up the hook. That could be too. Yeah. I thought they were just going to launch satellites. I thought they were just going to launch, yeah, like some satellite that was going to... They could be doing multiple like, things. I don't, I, <laughs> That'll I, cause more blackouts or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I guess I don't see their motive for uh, taking out the hook. Yeah. 
I, but it'd look really cool. Either way, <laughs> Good point. there's that. Um, but uh, one thing I was thinking of is everything has to go through Lyco Station, like even space tourists, right? Pretty much, yeah. There's the rare exception, but almost everything will go through a station. So maybe we could actually get to Lyco Station before the cargo launches. Mm-hmm. Right. That oh, way we don't have to take some like deadly trip. Yeah. I like, I like that idea. idea. <laughs> when you put it like that, <laughs> yeah, it sounds I've, smart. Uh, I've definitely determined that I don't plan on getting onto the cargo launch, so. Well, good news then. I might know a person who knows a person if they still want to talk to me. <laughs> oh. is, it, is it an ex? Uh, no, not all of us keep in touch with our exes like you. <laughs> that's, that's weird. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's just some, somebody I, that I know in the uh, the Sparks, you know, and they're not... They haven't exactly been in love with everything I've been doing in the past year and a bit. Is this someone we know or a new person? I would say this is a new person okay, for sure. sure. Uh, it's not going to be whatever that guy's name is. Smelly something. Gassy Jack. Yeah, Gassy Jack. <laughs> Smell- Smelly Jack. <laughs> Smelly Joe. Or, or or Edward, the guy that was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, bring back Edward. <laughs> I don't think Edward knows anything about this. No. He, he was just all about the facade. <laughs> That sounds like there was some agreement there that getting up to like a station first mm-hmm. and yeah. then intercepting the cargo up there would be a good way to do it. That seems yeah. like a good way. As long as they're not finding a way to stop some way. Yeah. Out of character. I just want to get in space. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard a couple yeah. people say that. So yeah. <laughs> no, I, I thought that would be a cool way to guarantee we get yeah. into space. Uh, that we get jettisoned. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think reasoning wise, it's probably easier to break protocol in space than it is like down here. Cause they probably have tons of security mm-hmm. Inter- international space. That's kind of what I was thinking is that vessel is like vessel is the most secure facility in the world, but maybe Leica is uh, slightly less so because they try to, you know, do all their vetting before they get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They deal in tourism and stuff. So it's hard to handle. There'll still definitely be challenges uh, to get up to like a station. Mm hmm. Especially yeah. with at least one person on the no-fly list. Well, yeah, that's why. <laughs> this is why I was suggesting my yeah. friend. Yeah. Who yeah. could maybe make a passport for me. Or or that connection in the strap hangers. Mm-hmm. It's it's okay. I got a couple X's working up there anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Melissa Donkey. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. He's not a real thing for Melissa's. Yeah, he, you don't even want to know what she does. <laughs> Another challenge will be getting up there before them because they're way ahead on the line as you. But as mm-hmm. I said earlier, it's not first come, first serve. Uh, so you may be able to work that out. Yeah, well, we got some funds. Mm-hmm. You got some uh, tricks up your sleeve. Mm-hmm. So that sounds good. Sounds like the beginnings of a plan. And next time we'll work out the details. See you in two weeks. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the House of Bob. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you gave us a review on Apple Podcasts, tell some of your friends, help us uh, grow this little community. If you'd like to chat with any of us, we're at the House of Bob on most social media platforms. We also have a Discord channel, uh, the link to which is in the show notes there, or on our website. If you'd like to support the show financially, you can check out our Patreon. We've got at least 35 hours of bonus content like director's commentary, one-shots, RPG zines, and a monthly blog post. I'd like to take a second to thank our Patreon sponsors. That's Bolt, Tyler K, Tom Inns, Tom Wesley, Mike, Scooter Emerson, Robert, Ray Kearney, Mark Boykin, Mary Margaret, Luke Conroy, Kieran Duffy, Keith Haddad, Josh Jordan, Jessica, Jessica Colvin, Elias Anderson, and Blucka12. Thanks, everybody. Artwork for this episode was by Jake at Javix. Audio production for this episode was by Mike from the Tales of the Glass Guarded World. Music by John Julius, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. And thanks to Hamish Cameron for designing this Raw RPG system. Thanks again for listening to this episode. Have a great day. Roll on. That's all for now. Stay funky, cyber junkies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, we should have been saying that the whole time. I know. Now you bring it in. It's like the end of the whole thing. That's when you bring it in. Well, Bug said that once uh, ages ago. Did oh, he? did he? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> Our Arby's oh, is around the corner. We can just go there. Arby's? Yeah. I'm yeah, it's Arby's. Arby's. Yeah, your Arby's. <laughs> the one that you bought. I know how much you love those sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, the I'm cool RV. With that. Oh.
Artie. Okay. The Hardys. Artie. Artie and the RV. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Parked in front of RV. Just to say the words. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Roll on you. or space junkies. What was that again? <laughs> uh, s- stay funky cyber junkies. Keep it funky, cyber junkies. See you later, space junkie. (laughs) See you later, space gators. (laughs) (laughs) Do, 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 do.